This is the last session and we've saved the best till last. So this session we're going to be talking about all about what's hot in neurodegeneration. We've got four fabulous speakers who I'm going to be keeping strict time. So if you see me feverishly waving my hands, that means it's time to wrap up. Okay, and to kick us off, we first have Dr. Jessica Lowe, who's a research associate at the Centre for Healthy Brain Aging within the School of Psychiatry at the University of New South Wales. And she's going uh, to be talking to us about the Stroke Hog Consortium. Thanks, Jess. Thank you, Amy and Emilio, for um, inviting me to speak here today. So today I'm going to talk a bit about what we do in Strocog, which stands for the Stroke and Cognition Consortium, and then I'll present results from our first harmonization project. So Strocog is a consortium that brings together international studies of cognitive decline and dementia following stroke, or TIA. Is led by Praminda Sekstev, who is the co-director of CHIBA at UNSW, and Stroko was established at Vascoc in 2015. So our aim is to facilitate a better understanding of the determinants of vascular contributions to cognitive disorders and to help improve the diagnosis and treatment of vascular cognitive disorders. So our key aims, our key objectives are to harmonize shared non-identifiable data from our memory studies and to perform independent participant data meta-analysis using um, combined harmonized data sets. So we invite, um, invite studies to join Strokehog if they have prospectively recruited patients with stroke or TIA. They're longitudinal with more than 75 participants in which major outcome measures include dementia or cognitive impairment. They also need to be um, willing to share data and to contribute intellectually to the objectives of Strokog. So currently, um, we have 32 member studies from 19 countries with more than 17,000 participants. In Australia, we have four member studies, including Amy's um, Canvas study and um, Sharon Camp's study called Nemesis. Chiba researchers are leading their research efforts, but we very much welcome our members and external researchers to conduct research projects using Strokehog data. And our member studies have a range of data available, including neuropsychological test data, dementia cognitive impairment diagnoses, functional test data, stroke-related data, MRI scans, and PET scans, and um, GLOS data from a few studies. So this is a flow chart that describes the data application process. Um, for external researchers, we require um, a sponsor who is able to support and vouch for the project. So the first step is for the research to reach out to myself or Perminder and talk about whether um, Strokeholt might have the data that the researcher needs. And then the researcher will submit a project proposal to myself. We would review it and then send it out to our research scientific committee, which is comprised of um, PIs from each member study. The committee would review the project proposal, um, approve with or without corrections, and then I would uh, send a data request to our member studies and collect the data and send them to the researcher who would be then be responsible for the um, timeline analysis and the write-up of the project. So each study cohort can opt in or opt out of projects, so they're not obliged to share the data if, not, if they're not ready. Um, so Amy's study canvas was not able to contribute to our first study because their results are not yet published. We request partial data sets to, um, for individual projects or additional variables if they've been shared previously. The PIs and of the studies who contributed data to a project must be given the opportunity to review the manuscript and be co-authors, and all Stroko members will be acknowledged in each Stroko paper. So now I'll talk a little bit about our first harmonization project, and it's um, titled The Profile of and Risk Factors for post cognitive Impairment in um, Diverse Anthem Regional Groups. So aim is to examine the profile of cognitive impairment at one to six months after stroke, or TIA, 
and to examine the relationship between vascular risk factors with cognitive impairment or post TIA cognitive function. We included studies that have um, assessed their baseline um, cognitive function at one to six months after stroke, and studies that have conducted TTEL neuropsychological test batteries and where um, appropriate normative data is available. So we included 13 studies from eight countries. Uh, in total, there are 3,520 participants, 61% with male, mean age was 67 years. We have a range of um, different ethnic racial groups from diff eight different countries, and most of them did not complete high school. Most of them had an ischemic stroke, 5% had a TIA, and these were the risk factors that were collected by all the studies, so the focus of our risk factor examination. So our aim was to present a comprehensive cognitive profile of the post-stroke participants. Now, each study has conducted a very different set of neuropsych tests, and there were not many tests in common, so we needed to be able to harmonize, um, we needed to be able to combine and compare the test data, so we had to harmonize the neuropsych tests by um, standardizing the test scores. So the first thing we did was to assign each test to one of these five domains. We then use a regression method to calculate standardized set scores adjusted by sex, age, and education using control or appropriate normative groups. We calculated the domain scores as the standardized average of all available tests in the domain. And we also calculated global cognition set score as the standardized average of five domain scores. We consider participants with set scores with less than minus 1.5 standard deviation in the control group as being impaired in the domain. And here's the results. Um, this bar chart shows the proportions of impairment in each domain in each study. And we can see that the proportions are relatively similar across the different studies. And overall, in the combined group, um, we have we observed 45% impairment in global cognition and between 30 to 35% in individual domains. In terms of um, ethno racial groups, these were the proportions of impairment in global cognition. So we can see that the proportions are relatively similar across the different groups, maybe except for the um, Singaporean Chinese, which have a lower uh, proportions of impairment. However, mixed models did not reveal any significant relationships between ethno racial groups and impairment. However, most of our studies consisted of white participants, and indeed, we think we need more studies in non white groups for us to have um, greater statistical power. So, next, we examined a number of risk factors with cognitive function using a linear mixed model, otherwise termed as the one-step IPD meta-analysis. We use the domain and global cognition scores as the outcome. We adjusted for sex, age, and education, and we examined the risk factors individually and then together in a single model. We also used the standard meta-analysis, a method to um, produce forest plots and to examine heterogeneity. So this table shows the results uh, from the linear mix model, which we uh, examine the risk factors together in a single model. And the both fonts indicate statistically significant results. So we can see that for diabetes and history of past stroke, they're both very strong significant risk factor for um, global cognition and in the individual domains. So we look at the, this figure here, this is showing that those with um, diabetes had nearly half a standard deviation less in global cognition test scores compared to those without diabetes. <coughs> and also for hypertension, smoking, and atrial fibrillation, there were significant associations in certain domains. So these are examples of the forest plots. Um, showing the relationship between diabetes and a history of past stroke in global cognition. And they, they're showing that 
both, both respectors are strongly significant. They're also showing that the heterogeneity is quite low, despite the diversity of our studies. So in conclusion, we concluded a large-scale examination of postural cognitive profile based on independent participant data from an international consortium. 45% of patients were impaired in global cognition and 30 to 35% in individual cognitive domains one to six months after stroke or TIA. History of past stroke and diabetes were associated with worse cognitive function, hypertension, atrial fibrillation, and smoking had less strong or domain-specific negative associations. And we need additional studies in non-white groups to further explore evidence racial differences in cognitive impairment. So we've completed this project, and actually we are working on a resubmission of a paper for neurology. And our next project we've just started is on uh, cognitive decline, and we're looking at the longitudinal change in cognitive function in our post-stroke cohorts. And we also started to think about how to harmonize MRI data um, in our memory studies, and it's proving to be quite a challenge. So for, me, for, me, for more information about stroke, please visit our website. We also have a methodology paper. And please contact myself or Perminder if you have a study that um, you think you be, might be interested in joining Strokog and you'd like to discuss potential projects using Strokog data. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Jessica. What a great um, source of information and keeping to time. I think I threatened her enough that that worked. Fabulous. We'll keep moving. So